That's right, kids. It's time for some Pokedex updates. Thankfully, there aren't many to report on. If we go down a ways, I caught a Venonat while I was on Route 18. Or no, it's Route 15, excuse me. But that's not important. What is important is I raised it to level 31 when it evolved into a Venomoth. Similarly, I caught a Doe Duo while I was on Route 16, same place I caught Snorlax, and raised it to level 31 when it evolved into Dodrio. Finally, on Route 15, same place I caught my Venonat, I also managed to catch a Ditto. Very nice. And that's it as far as Pokedex updates are concerned. This should bring me to 64 out of 66, or 64 out of 150 rather than 66. The reason why my numbers are up a ways is because I also have some updates to my Pokemon team. Guess what? I traded both Yulin and Rasmussen off screen, which means that Yulin evolved into Alakazam and Rasmussen evolved into Golem. It feels so great to have both of them reach their final stage of evolution, because now they're really going to kick some butt, particularly in the next gym. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What's happening, guys? My name is Adam, a.k.a. Speedy Spectrum, and welcome back to Let's Play and Dub Pokemon Fire Red version. Before we get started, please be sure to leave a like and hit that big red subscribe button to subscribe my channel. Every one of those helps. In the last episode, we traveled down some routes, battled some trainers, and got some experience. In this episode, we're going to explore Fuchsia City and maybe even challenge the Fuchsia City Gym. We have this uh, zoo of sorts. And there are different Pokemon here, and if you check them, their pictures will be added to your Pokedex. However, in order to get the full entry, you will of course need to catch them. Speaking of which, we're going to head up here to this building, home of the Safari game, Pokemon you catch. But for simplicity's sake, let's just call it the Safari Zone. And we're going to pay a visit. It costs 500 Pokedon. It costs 500 Poke Dollars in order to enter. And it's very much in our best interest to go because there are a couple of things that we need to pick up while we're here. We're also going to receive 30 Safari Balls. More on that later. For now, welcome to the Safari Zone. This is where some of the rarest Pokemon in the game can be found, and they can only be found here. You see, this place works a little bit differently than others. For starters, you don't battle the Pokemon one-on-one. -on -one. Instead, you have to use items in order to capture them. You have three options. You can either toss a Safari Ball, you can toss some bait, or you can toss a rock. The Pokémon that can be found in the Safari Zone can run away, just like you can in a regular wild Pokémon battle. Now, if you toss a rock at the Pokémon, they will get angry, which makes them more likely to run away, but easier to catch. Conversely, if you toss bait at the Pokémon, it'll make them harder to catch, but more likely to stay. <laughs> And it wasn't very evident right there. Oh, wow! I get attacked by two wild Pokemon while I'm on the same square. And if I didn't know any better, I'd say this was probably the exact same Nidoran that I tried to catch earlier. But since I already have a Nidoran, I don't need one. A lot of people either really, really like this place or really, really hate it. I'm kind of in the middle as far as it's concerned because I applaud them for doing something different. This really forces you to make good decisions. What I don't like is the fact that Pokemon love to run away 
especially some of the rarer ones you'll encounter here. A leaf stone, that's rather nice. This may also be a good opportunity for me to talk about the wild Pokemon you can catch here. Oh, we get Team 11, which contains Sunny Day. That's a rather nice move. But anyway, back to what I was talking about earlier. Certain Pokemon can only be found in the Safari Zone. And holy mackerel, do I have a lot of bios to go over. I guess we might as well start with the Pokemon that we're battling now, which is Execute. Execute is a number 102 in the Pokedex. It's a Grass and Psychic type. That's a fairly unique type combination, I have to say. Unfortunately, it leaves Execute with lots of weaknesses, and its move pool isn't that great when leveling up. The only attacking move it knows for a good long while is Confusion, and later on it learns Solar Beam. You'll have to use TMs in order for Execute to reach its full potential, but when you do evolve it into Executor using a Leaf Stone, then it gets a ton of special attack, and unlike other grass types, it can actually use its special ability of Chlorophyll pretty well since its speed is rather low to start with. So if you do, so uh, Execute would be a great Pokemon to teach that Sunny Day TM that you just got. Now the next Pokemon we can encounter is Parasect, number 47 in the Pokedex. I think Execute has potential. Parasect does not. Parasect is a bug and grass type. It's the evolved form of Paris, obviously. And everything I said about Parasect, or Paris, excuse me, remains the same with Parasect. Its typing is horrible. Its stats are terrible. The only reason you would want to use it is because it learns Spore and makes for a good HM Slave. Otherwise, don't even bother. Now next up, we have Scyther. Number 123 in the Pokedex, Scyther is exclusive to Fire Red only. It's a bug and flying type, and I am not a fan of its typing. Never have been, never will. A crippling weakness to rock attacks, but Scyther is very speedy and aggressive. It does have an evolution which is unfortunately unaccessible until post-game, and that's a shame because I really like Scizor a lot. Its move pool isn't really the greatest either. It doesn't learn very many attacking moves, and its coverage is pretty shallow as well. It is, however, one of the few Pokémon that can learn False Swipe. False Swipe is a rather interesting move because it always ensures the, po the enemy Pokémon has at least one uh, HP left over, which makes it really useful when you're battling difficult to catch Pokemon. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work in this area. You'll also notice that I obtained TM47, which is Steel Wing, and that's a pretty handy move uh, for any flying Pokemon to learn because it gives them coverage against rock Pokemon. But we can talk about that later. On to the next Pokemon, and that is Pinsir. Number 127 in the Pokedex, Pinsir is a bug type and it is exclusive to Leaf Green. Pinsir, along with Scyther, is incredibly difficult to catch. They'll try to run away at the soonest possible moment. Pinsir, in my opinion, is quite underrated. It's a pretty good physical sweeper. 125 base attack? You can't go wrong with that. It also has a really good move pool. Can even learn some fighting type moves through TM. Not only that, but its ability is Hyper Cutter, which is really nice to have on a Pokemon with high attack like Pinsir. So, if you manage to catch one, and I applaud you if you do, it can be a really good Pokemon to use. Next up is Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn, number 111 in the Pokedex. It is an excellent, excellent Pokemon. It's a ground and rock type, and it is super, super defensive. 
It can shrug off physical attacks like they are nothing. If you are up against a Pokemon that you resist, you are just going to absolutely wall them with Rhyhorn. The downside is it's got two quad weaknesses like other rock and ground Pokemon. Keep it away from any water or grass attacks you might encounter, and you'll do pretty well with it. Of the two possible abilities it has, I would definitely say Rockhead is better than Lightning Rod. It also evolves relatively late at level 42, so you're definitely going to have to be patient with it. But if you can get it up there, great Pokémon. And speaking of great Pokémon, that brings us to Chansey. Number 113 in the Pokédex, Chansey is a normal type. It is extremely rare. Only a 1% encounter rate. Not only that, it is also insanely difficult to catch. But, if somehow, some way, you manage to get your hands on it, you will have, without question, the best special wall in the entire game. And that is buffed by its massive, massive HP. But aside from its HP and special defense, all of its other stats are pretty low. But that should not dissuade you from using Chansey, by no means. It also has two great abilities, Natural Cure and Serene Grace. I definitely prefer Serene Grace, but Natural Cure is certainly very good as well. I just like Serene Grace because it complements Chansey's phenomenal move pool. Of course, being a normal type, there is great diversity in the number of moves that it can learn. It even has an evolution, which is obviously inaccessible until post-game, but what really makes Chansey great is the fact that it can learn Soft Boiled. Soft Boiled is an attack that heals the user's HP, but the but it takes a step up from Recover because you can actually use it outside of a battle to heal the HP of your other Pokémon. How cool is that? Chansey is amazing. Amazing with a capital I but you are going to have one heck of a time catching it. Speaking of normal types, we have another one in Kangaskhan. Number 115 in the Pokedex. Kangaskhan is a normal type, as I mentioned, and just like Pinsir, I think Kangaskhan is a very underrated Pokemon. All of its stats are pretty solid with the exception of its special attack. This thing is obviously meant to be a physical attacker, and it can take a lot of hits too, as well as dish them out. It's a great physical attacker, and it's one of the very few Pokémon that can learn the move Dizzy Punch. Dizzy Punch is a normal type attack, and it's got some decent power behind it. And for the longest time, it was Kangaskhan's signature move, prior to Generation 3, that is. I think it has a power of 70, and it can potentially cause confusion. I'm not 100% sure. I'm checking my notes here, and yes, pr from Generation 2 onwards, it has a 20% chance of confusing the target. Overall, it's a great Pokémon, and it got even better once it received a Mega Evolution. So next up, we have Venomoth, number 49 in the Pokedex. Venomoth is a bug and poison type, the evolved form of Venonat, obviously. And what I said about Venonat remains true for Venomoth. Its stats are okay for a bug type. It's got lots of weaknesses, and it can learn some psychic attacks, as well as the standard powder moves. Shield Dust is a nice ability, but one thing I never understood about Venomoth is that even though it is clearly shown to be flying, it can somehow be hit by ground types. I don't understand it either. Now last up is Tauros. Number 128 in the Pokedex, Tauros is a normal type, like Chansey. And also like Chansey, it only has a 1% encounter rate. And just like Chansey, it's also extremely difficult to catch. But when you do get it, oh man, you'll have an amazing Pokémon. 
Tauros is incredibly fast, and it's one of the most powerful physical attackers you can get. Even though I tend to prefer Snorlax, it makes a, it fits into almost any team, and it also has Intimidate, which is really, really nice. Tauros was a competitive king back in the days of Red, Blue, and Yellow. And for good reason, it just stampeded everything in its path. And while it's not quite as dominant as it once was, it's still a relatively solid Pokemon. But just like Chansey, you see what I'm getting at here? Good luck trying to catch it. Okay, at long last, the bios are done. Well, most of them, anyway. We're in the third area of the Safari Zone, and we're going to grab this Pokeball, which contains the Gold Teeth. This is a significant item we'll use a little later on. And we'll also grab this item, which is TM32, that contains Double Team. I've used that before. And now, we are at the end of the Safari Zone. How many steps do we have? We have 122. Not bad. We're going to go in here, and we're going to talk to this dude. Ah, finally! You're the first person to reach the secret house. Although I made a campaign for our grand opening, I was getting worried that no one would win our campaign prize. Congratulations, you have won! And he gives us HM3 as a reward. HM3 is Surf. Pokemon will be able to ferry you across water using it. And this HM isn't disposable, so you can use it over and over. You're super lucky for winning this fabulous prize. Darn right we're lucky because Surf is easily my favorite HM in the entire game. And uh, we're going to go ahead and teach Surf to one of our Pokemon right now. Surf is a water type move with a power of 95. Very nice. And like other HMs, it has a secondary function. In Surf's case, you can ride on water. And we're going to go ahead and teach it to Schneider because I need a stronger move, or a stronger water type attack. And as much as I hate to do it, we're going to get rid of Water Pulse. It has served me well, but Schneider needs a more powerful water attack. And I think Surf will fit the bill perfectly. Speaking of water Pokemon, there are a few few water Pokemon that we haven't mentioned yet, and we will do that once I exit the secret house. We're gonna... Unfortunately, we can't surf because we need Fuchsia City's gym badge, so in the meantime, I'm just gonna run around until uh, my time is up. 83 uh, steps left. I guess this also... Uh, would be a good time to talk about the different Pokemon you can encounter in the Safari Zone on the water. The first of which is Slowpoke. Number 79 in the Pokedex, Slowpoke is only catchable in Leaf Green. It's a water and psychic type, and as its name implies, it's very slow. But what it lacks in speed, it makes up for in defense. Slowpoke can tank a lot of hits, especially when it evolves. It also makes for a very strong special attacker. Own Tempo is definitely the better of the two abilities, because an immunity to confusion is overall more handy to have than an immunity to infatuation. Slowpoke does have an alternate evolution that is obviously inaccessible until post-game. Unfortunately, it doesn't evolve until level 37, which is quite a ways away. But when it does evolve into Slowbro, it can take hits all day long, and it got even better in Generation 4 when it received Slack Off. So Slowpoke is a great Pokémon. Now for those of you who are playing Fire Red, you will instead be able to catch Psyduck. Number 54 in the Pokedex, Psyduck is exclusive to Fire Red, as I already mentioned, and its stats are respectable. And let's face it, if you've ever seen the anime, then you should know all about Psyduck. Uh, it is tough to raise, and when it does evolve, it makes an alright special attacker. There are certainly better water types, I think, that are out there. Uh, Cloud 9 is definitely the better of the two abilities. Damp is just flat out useless. Speaking of water types, 
Let's move on to another one. Poliwag, number 60 in the Pokedex. Poliwag is a pure water type, and its stats are all right, and it does have a decent move pool. Plus, when it reaches its final stage of evolution, it gets a fighting type, which gives it more possibilities, as well as a potency as a mixed attacker. It's not half bad. I will say it's a better physical attacker than it is a special one. It's decently bulky too, but just like Psyduck, I think there are better water types out there. And like Slowpoke, it also has an alternate evolution that is inaccessible until post-game. There are certainly better water types out there, as I've mentioned before. This is not one of those Pokémon. Number 118, Goldeen. Its stats are mediocre. Its abilities are underwhelming. It is not recommended, and it doesn't evolve until level 33. For those of you who have played Super Smash Bros. before, you'll know why Goldeen is so useless. But if you're really lucky, you can even capture its evolved form, and that is Seeking. Seeking, number 119 in the Pokedex, is rather subpar, just like Goldeen. The move, its move pool is extremely shallow, and interestingly enough, its beta name was Neptune. That's unusual. Interestingly enough, in Generation 1, it was the only Pokémon that could learn Waterfall, because back then, Waterfall wasn't even a TM. But that really shouldn't uh, persuade you to add Seeking to your team. There are better water types out there. Lastly is a Pokemon that can only be accessible to fishing, or that can only be caught by fishing, and that is Dratini. Now this is a Pokemon worth talking about. Dratini is number 147 in the Pokedex. Dratini, along with its evolutions, are the only Dragon-type Pokemon in the game. Granted, its stats are pretty low when you first catch it, but when it evolves, oh man, will you have a powerhouse. It gets massive physical attack upon evolving. The problem is that it doesn't reach its first stage of evolution until it reaches level 30, and you catch it at level 15, so it really does take some dedication. Not only that, but it doesn't reach its final stage of evolution until level 53. Five. So, by the time it does evolve, you're probably going to be close to the end of the game. But, if you persevere enough and you raise it all the way up to its final stage of evolution of Dragonite, it's got a fantastic move pool. It's a great Pokemon. It's also relatively tough to catch in the Safari Zone. And even rarer, sometimes you can even encounter... It's evolved form, Dragonair, number 148 in the Pokedex. Dragonair is extremely rare. Only a 1% encounter rate with the Super Rod, and it's tough to raise like Dratini. But everything I said about Dratini remains consistent with Dragonair. Tough to raise, needs patience to raise, but it's a great Pokemon once it finally evolves. Interestingly enough, Dragonair's beta name was Dragon. Yeah, real original. Okay, at long last, the bios are over and done with. This is pretty much going to be the episode of the bios. Okay, looks like our safari game is up. I don't know if I obtained all of the items, but uh, yeah. There are a couple of other things I can do while I'm here. And, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take care of them right now. I don't think I'm going to have enough time to challenge the gym leader. But that's okay. There are still some other things I can do. For starters, I'm going to go in this door and talk to this dude. This guy is the fishing guru's older brother, just like the last one. Yes, we can tell him that we love to fish. And he gives us the good rod. As far as fishing rods go, this one's right in the middle between the old rod and the super rod. The fact that you get it after you get the best rod in the game is rather odd, to be sure. Okay, our... 
yes, this is the right door that we, this is the right house we need to be in. This guy is the Safari Zone Warden, and we give him the gold teeth. Yeah, I don't know what his teeth were doing in the Safari Zone, but, uh, yeah. Thanks, son. You're a real lifesaver. No one could understand a word that I said, not a one. I was too ashamed to show my face around the office, even. Let me give you something for your trouble. And he gives us HM4, which contains the move Strength. And I'm gonna go ahead and teach it to one of my Pokémon, believe it or not. I am going to teach Strength to Rasmussen. And I think I am going to replace Mega Punch. Mega Punch has served me well, but I think Strength is going to be a little bit more reliable. That's right, Rasmussen. Power up. And we're going to go ahead and use Strength on this boulder. That is Strength's secondary function. So we can move this boulder aside and grab this Pokeball, which contains a rare candy. Very nice. Okay, I think that just about covers it. So next time on Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red, we are going to challenge the Fuchsia City Gym. See you guys next time.